Hello, hello! Welcome back to Whiskey With E. I'm Eric. Now, we're going to follow on the trend of the Australian whiskies. So, the last sample we have... Let's grab it out, shall we? So, out of the Christmas Whiskey Tasting Kit, which I got from uh, Aldi or Aldi for $39.99. Last one. Here we go. What is it? Oh, Nova. Single malt, single malt from Starwood Distillery. Hillary, there you go. Alrighty, so this is coming in at 41% ABV, one standard drink. Let's get it poured up and uh, we'll have a little chat about it. So, from my little quick research, I found out that um, Starwood Distillery was founded in 2007 or 2009. <laughs> Great research. Now, founded by David. By Vitali, am I pronouncing his name wrong? It's an Italian name. All right, so who pretty much he branched off uh, from being underneath or working with uh, Bill Lark from Lark Distillery. So he branched off, formed his own um, distillery back in the city of his hometown. So they're coming out of Melbourne, Australia. You know what? Let's let's have a little looky looky. Alrighty. Look at that. Oh yeah, a bit of bit of legs coming down there. Colour looks a little bit of a reddish hue, so I believe they are aging their product in ex Australian wine barrels, so it could be like uh, South Australian Shiraz barrels or it's just a whole bunch of red wine barrels I believe, but I'm just going off memory, you guys, so let's have a little read here. All right. Starwood Distillery, Nova Single Malt from Port Melbourne, Victoria. A classic offering from a modern Aussie icon. Melbourne-based Starwood has made their name producing a contemporary style of single malt whiskey. Nova has been matured in red wine barrels from Aussie wineries, making top quality Shiraz and Cab, Cab Sav. Cabernet Sauvignon Blanc. The result is whiskey that delivers bursting cherry and rather uh, Let's just have a little uh, looky, looky, looky ourselves, eh? Alrighty, so pretty much Starwood Distillery is the most awarded distillery here in Australia. Well, was the most awarded in 2022. I believe they won. They've, they've been winning a lot of awards. Um, one that stands out is... What, like uh, 2017, they won the Australian Best um, Single Mold Award in the World Whiskey Awards. I know, I know, all these awards, it's kind of like the Bill Murray thing, or, you know, like, you know, do, do you take it as a serious, you know, like a status? Like, oh, he got gold, or, you know, do we take them seriously? Like, how, how many whiskies did they try? How many people on the panel? I don't know these things, but um, I'm just here to judge this for what it is right now. So, without further ado, Starwood Nova. All right, here we go. On the nose. All right. The nose reminds me of uh, if you ever smelt like a pink Moscato, all right? or like a sparkling pink Moscato or something like that. It's got that real red berry, that red cherry kind of berry kind of fruity vibes, almost like um, like a lolly type of strawberries, you know, not the real strawberries, because I don't even think real strawberries have much of a smell. Smell of real strawberry. The smell of strawberry that we're thinking is like lollies. So yes, I'm getting a a type of lolly strawberry going on here. But you are getting that, uh, like an oak kind of vibe there, but it's not like a bourbon oak, obviously. This is, this is the, the Australian style of oak. Fragrant oak. You are getting that vanilla as well, the caramel in there, but ever so slightly. But at least, it's not another apples and pears. So this is heading along the lines of the last one that we re reviewed uh, was a 
78 degrees. Now that was aged in X wine barrels too, I believe. But um, but this definitely your nose is different. Now that 78 degrees, that came out a lot more of the the raisins, like the sultana kind of vibes. But this this is all like red berries or some kind of strawberries or red berry. Is there even a red berry? I don't know. I'm like, it just smells sweet. It smells beautiful. Not bad. You know what? Let's see how it goes on the palate. Cheers, everyone. Kind of just rolls over sweet and smooth, eh? Well, I know that's a terrible word to use, but very approachable. A light spice comes up, like with a slight bitter, tannic, oaky vibes. But then it just rolls over to that sweet berry kind of vibe, so... It is very crushable. What, what is it again? 40... 41% is it? 41%. This must be the lowest percent out of them all, so... Even though... The nose is awesome, it tastes lovely, but I think I just like darker notes in there as well. So even though I appreciate the bright, you know, berries and this real strawberry fruity vibe, it is missing some dark notes, but I know this is not the direction that they were going. But let's let's see how the uh, the finish is on the second sip. Cheers everyone. Who's tried it? Let me know in the comments. Even more approachable on, on the second sip. I mean, once your your throat, your everything gets acclimated to it, it's just way too approachable. I think the only thing that this has a downfall on is the finish. The finish isn't like a, a long Kentucky hug style uh, finish. It is only 41%. But considering it is only 41%, it does have lovely flavours that carry on. I say it's like a medium finish, but let's have a little read of what they think of this. Alrighties. So they say, yeah, I'm going to read these little notes that you get in with the tasting kit. So on the nose, cherries, strawberries, red wine, and nutmeg. I am getting a kind of a little slight nutty vibe now that the glass is semi-empty. And yeah, I guess you can notice the red wine vibes, obviously. It is all aged in red wine barrels, but we're trying to distinguish what the red wine actually knows is like. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Alrighties. Taste! It says blackberries, poached pears, vanilla custard and oak spice. Said there was some spice there. It is sweet, you know, it's got that vanilla, so poached pears. I think I need more, guys. Alright, is we going for a little bit of a second porridge? Alright, guys, here we go. See, this is what I mean, guys. Normally, when you buy a full bottle, you're going to get time to spend with it. You're going to get to notice it open up. I think things starting to go on an angle. Alright, is. Hence why when, when, you, when you're doing these little samples, it's almost like there's just not enough, you know? We, you're only just starting to get to know it and, and it's all over. But I appreciate the experience, you know, getting to try all different Australian whiskies is awesome because I think Nova at the moment here in Australia goes for $100 to $110. So not a lot of Australians would, you know, go out of their way to pay that for a 41% expression of something but it is good to try things guys that's why i'm here to let you know how i feel about it but even though it's a lovely experience it's bright it's fruity i don't know I, i'm a proof hound you know i complain about bourbon prices here in australia but compared to australian whiskey bourbon's relatively cheap when you think about it now so and keep in mind, Australian whiskey, to be classed as an Australian whiskey, just has to be aged in, like, any barrels, used barrels, whatever barrels. 
for at least two years. So, you know, there is no age statement in this. We don't even know how old it is. A lot of things can start maturing at its peak, probably at three, four years due to the hot climate here in Australia. But anyways, let's go for another taste, guys. Black Berries Poached Pears, Vanilla Custard. I don't know, you have to dig guys, you really have to dig. Like the vanilla custard side, you could look at that as, there is like a creamy element to it, could be the custard. Now it says finish, long with drying spice and sharp crunchy apples. Yeah, that's what I mean, it's medium to long, the finish is going, it doesn't just die off like these cheap whiskies that are 40% here in Australia. But crunchy apples, yeah, a little bit. Like my, my impression, when you're drinking this Australian whiskey, it semi reminds you of a scotch. So pretty much I think Australian whiskey has got a lot of influence from the scotch whiskey world, but they're just trying to do their own thing and trying to find their own identity. But a lot of uh, Australian whiskies do remind you of like a space side or, you know, depending on what, what barrel they're aged it in. But anyways, I don't want this video to go for too long, but uh, much love to you all. Who has tried this product from a Starwood Distillery Nova Single Malt? There you go. Let me know in the comments. I mean, I've reviewed a Starwood product in the past. It was their bottom of the end range of the spectrum of things. I didn't really appreciate it too much. Maybe I sounded negative, but I did say, not saying all their product may be like that. I'm sure, yeah, this, this was definitely better. I'm sure they have other expressions that are probably better than this. So, you know, it, it's kind of like levels, you know, like wild turkey, are you gonna, you gonna try the 81 and judge wild turkey for the 81 proof or you're gonna keep going up the spectrum, you know, you might try the 101, try some Russells, get into the rare breeds, you know, and then you start getting into all these other expressions, you know, Master's Keeps, all that. So I'm sure Starwood has beautiful bottles, beautiful expressions. It's just, uh, this was just my second one. But to be honest, I don't mind this. Do I recommend it? Yeah, I recommend you give anything a try, guys. If you like this kind of bright, fruity kind of vibes, you know, don't, don't picture it as like a bourbon with like dark notes, you know, and since it's low and proof, you're not really getting that Kentucky hug vibe, but there is a finish, there is a vibe, there is heat. Anyways, I'm going to be repeating myself. Much love to you all. You are all appreciated. Like, comment, subscribe, and I wish you all a safe and happy, awesome weekend, guys. Cheers, everyone. Drink responsibly now. Catch us all later.